Hello again, everybody. It's me, Marcus, and I review stuff. Today I'm doing a song, uh, Kirisut Gomen, Gomen by Trivium. I, I, I know I said it wrong. Uh, I actually still don't really know how to say it. Um, but this does come as a request. As always, if you would like to request something, please leave a comment down below, and I will be sure to get to it. Although I do have quite a bit, big, uh, bit of a big backlog of too many bees uh, of songs to get to, so it's gonna be a while. If you request something, uh, it's definitely gonna be a while till I till I get to it. And I apologize for that, but I just get so many requests. I do pride myself on taking every single request, looking at every single comment on my channel. So. Uh, it, it does create a big backlog of, of songs, but um, I will say I have heard this song before. Um, in fact, it's probably one of my favorite Trivium songs off of my favorite Trivium album, as a matter of fact. So really excited to get to listen to it today. This is what I'll call one of my channel favorites. Basically, whenever someone requests a song uh, that I've already heard before, uh, again, I, I still like to honor every request, so I'm still going to listen to it, you know, uh, even though it's a song I've heard before. I'm just happy to jam out. Uh, talk about what I like, you know, it's always good to just talk about music that you like uh, and, and kind of hopefully uh, Open up someone else's mind to, to a song that maybe they haven't heard before or they haven't thought of before so really excited for this one like I said um, And then after this back to your normally scheduled uh, reactions where I have no idea what I'm listening to so um, You know if you, if you don't want to see me react to something I already know uh, About then you know hopefully I'll see you in the next video, but if you do Let's listen to it. Let's jam out. Let's have some fun. Again, Trivium. Song I, name I can't pronounce. Let's let's listen. Hmm. Hmm.
Damn it, man. I love that song. Um, God, I, I don't know if you guys enjoyed that, but I had a blast. Uh, it, it's always great for me to just listen to songs that I love and think about them and just kind of reminisce on what makes them great and what makes made me love them uh, from the beginning. So for me, again, one of my favorite Tribune songs off of my favorite Tribune album. You know, what I really love about this album is that it is so steeped in mythology and culture, um, and it just makes for just a really cool listen, especially lyrically. Um, man, you know, if you haven't heard any of the songs on this album, you should definitely go listen to them. If there's anything you need to know about me, it's that I love fantasy, I love mythology, uh, I love kind of look, taking a look at that, that really cool cultural aspect of, of, of different cultures, and it, it just it's all fascinating to me. So, so interesting. So, uh, really excited to talk about this one lyrically, because like I said, this album is just so steeped in culture and mythology. Um, and so, let's take a look here. Um, Trivium's lead vocalist Matt uh, Heffy pays homage to his Japanese heritage in the first track off the album Shogun. Shogun is the band's fourth studio album. The band received much fire for Heffy's clean vocals and a perceived imitation of Metallica on their last album, The Crusade. Shogun marks a return to form by the band hoping to silence the critics. And let me tell you, it's a heavy album. I, I really enjoy it, uh, especially from that standpoint. But a um, little bit of background on the song. Um, the phrase Kiriste Gomen is an old Japanese expression dating back to the feudal era, right to strike, which is the right of samurai to kill commoners for perceived affronts. Samurai had the right to strike with sword at anyone of a lower class who com compromised their honor. Uh, so I think it's kind of just a really cool, although maybe uh, cruel as well, um, concept there, an idea to make a song about. Um, it translates literally as authorization to cut and leave the body of a victim. Contrary to popular belief, this exact term didn't originate in the Edo period. The real name used in historical sources is either Uchisute, I guess that's how you pronounce that, to strike and abandon, or Buri Uchi, which is to offend and strike. Because the right was defined as part of self-defense, Kurosuke Gomen uh, had a, a set of tight rules. The strike had to follow immediately after the offense, meaning that the striker could not attack someone for a past grievance or after a substantial amount of time. Also due to the right being self-defense, it was not permissible to deliver a further coup de grace if a blow had been successfully applied. Anyone who was at the receiving end had the right to defend themselves by wakizashi, a situation most common in the case of, of a higher samurai exercising the right against a lower-ranked samurai, as those would always carry wakizashi. Uh, some professions, like doctors and midwives, were not eligible targets for kurisute gomen uh, while at work or heading to their workplaces, as their jobs often required them to push the boundaries of honor. This exception was called torinuke gomen, uh, authorizations to pass first. Interesting. It is a lot of interesting stuff. Um, in any case, the samurai performing the act had to prove that his action was right. After striking down his victim, the user was required to notify it to a nearby government officer, give give his weapon, uh, his, give his version of the facts, and provide at least one witness who corroborated it. And he was expected to spend the next 20 days at home as a proof of contrition. The last one applied even after favorable verdict, although it is unclear whether um, it applied to the physical author of the death or his superior in case the kill was performed by proxy. However, moreover, the homicidal weapon could be confiscated if an investigation was necessary or as a warning for a kill whose justification was feeble and it was often given back after the 20 days. Uh, performing Kirisute Gomen without justification was severely punished. The guilty party uh, would could be destituted from his job and could even be sentenced to death or forced to commit seppuku. Uh, his family would be uh, affected too if his properties and titles were removed from his inheritance. So yeah, uh, a lot of cool stuff there. I can see uh, how that would make a really badass metal song. Uh, so with all that in mind, let's take a look at these lyrics. So it says, He who walks the fire breathes. Uh, he who walks the fire breathes unlike the rest, living by the bloody creed, Kirisute Gomen, heir of battle, tasting stale, reeks of deceit, 
uh, send the bitter straight to hell, to hell, Kirisute Gomen. Uh, so to me, it, it, verse one is definitely talking about the samurai, right? He who walks the fire breathes unlike the rest, living by the bloody creed. That sounds to me very much like a samurai. Uh, Kirisute Gomen, heir of battle, tasting stale, reeks of deceit, send the bitter straight to hell, Kirisute Gomen. In their wretched guts, all they want is to feed, unending, covetous hunger known as greed. As the last legion makes its way to the skies, I can see in their eyes they've already died inside, but as for the outside, I'll take their fucking heads. So yeah, really hardcore. To me, it, all, it almost sounds like a samurai who sort of pictures himself above others uh, or above the society in which he is living in uh, where all he sees are greedy people, covetous, um, and so he sees them as already being like dead on the inside and so for their crimes he will kill them outwardly if you know if that makes sense. Um, Quake his bread with the storm, conceiving war, wicked stampeding hordes, Kirisute Gomen, in their wretched guts all they want is to feed, unending covetous hunger known as greed, as the last legion makes its way to the skies, I can see in their eyes they've already died inside. But as for the outside, I'll take their fucking heads. I will never be what they want me to. I live by my own path in life. So this is sort of almost sounds like a uh, um, a renegade samurai. Don't they? Didn't they call those? Um, uh, um, oh, there's a whole anime based on it. <laughs> uh, Ronins? Is that right? Um, I'm thinking of. Um, uh, something else yeah uh, Ronan's right um, I will never be what they want me to be I live by my own path in life no turning back now I won't be held down forced into a shallow grave built upon their empty ways there's no turning back there's such an epic uh, like sense to this um, to this song just the, the way he describes everything uh, like lines like that I'll never be what they want me to be I'll live by my own path in life no turning back now I won't be held down forced into a shallow grave built upon their empty ways they're just so epic and like uh, just fantastical sounding but it is based on something that's happened in history so that's just so cool uh, there's hell to pay such disarray a bloody mess flesh masquerade with all the blood making a flood you made your path by crossing us he who spits the fire seeds all that all he detests decapitating bloody creed Kirisute Gomen. So that to me is the exact Kirisute Gomen. It's decapitating bloody creed. He who spits the fire seeds. Uh, so like he who spits the fire, I get, I think is referring to the samurai. Sees all he detests. So um, he's he's looking at at this world and so many things that he he detests and of course uh, will kill those who uh, bring dishonor. Um, in their wretched guts, all they want is to feed unending covetous hunger known as greed. As the last legion makes its way to the skies, I can see in their eyes they've already died inside. But as for the outside, I'll take their fucking heads. I will never be what they want me to be. I live by my own path in life. No turning back now. I won't be held down, forced into a shallow grave, built upon their empty ways. There's no turning back. You know, so I never, I, I knew about the, the phrase Kirisute Gomen and what it meant. You know, uh, having this album so steeped in mythology and culture and history, um, on my own, you know, being a lyrics guy, self-proclaimed lyrics guy, I, I've definitely gone back and kind of looked up a bunch of the meanings behind a lot of these songs before. And again, this is an album that I absolutely love. And so I kind of knew about the phrase, but as I read this song more, and actually this is why I love this channel so much, is that it gives me the time to really just sit, sit or stand, uh, and just really think about what the song is saying, um, and what the author's message here is. And, and I, I, until now, I had never really thought that perhaps this is a samurai who has lost his way um, to the point where he's maybe killing uh, without that righteous cause um, but doesn't care he, he's he's not going to be uh, sort of bound by this code he's kind of forged his own path in life so almost like a wayward samurai is kind of what I'm getting here but still really cool you know I, I think the samurai throughout all of like popular culture and just uh, uh, even American culture you see a lot where I just like so revered and thought of to just be these badass like warriors um and I, I can say, you know, I've, I've bought into that, that sort of propaganda, uh, or at least that, that image of the samurai that's just these badass, like, uh, yeah, and, and like even, in, you know, Star Wars, the, the Jedi are based off of samurai in many ways. It's just, it's such a pervasive thing in our culture, and to me it's just so cool. Um, hell, even in D&D I've played a samurai before. I've played a samurai multiple times, actually. It's just a really cool, to me, it's a really, really cool thing. Um, yeah, just, I, I love it, I love it. So, um, anyway... 
The lyrics, uh, fantastic for me. And again, I'm biased. This is a song I've heard plenty of times before. A song that I love off an album that I love. But to me, what I love about it is, again, the very fantastical and epic way that they write the, the lyrics here. Um, and, and I just, I, I love the, the subject matter, you know, again, steeped in culture, history, mythology. I, yeah, I just love that kind of stuff. So uh, two big thumbs up from me in the lyrical department. Um, a lot of great stuff here instrumentally as well. You know, you really get a lot of great drum fills. You get a lot of great heavy guitar riffs, a lot of double bass on the drums, which I think is really cool too. Um, you get a, a, an epic guitar solo. You know, listening to it in this in this context, the guitar solo is a lot longer than I had originally remembered it being. And, I'm, and it, but it's it's very epic in scale. I mean, it's such an awesome guitar solo. I think honestly, my favorite part of the song, and, and this is sort of an all around type of thing, is when when he goes from um, what is it? It's it's uh, he goes from verse. Ooh, let me see. Um, he goes from the chorus to verse three, where it's in. Uh, they're, they've already died on the inside, but as for the outside, I'll take their fucking heads. And the moment he finishes saying heads, it immediately transitions into "I will never be what they want me to be." It's like such a quick uh, and, uh, and clean transition. It goes from just this heavy, heavy chorus with him screaming and with the heavy instrumentation to something a little bit clearer with his clean singing, and it's just a, such a cool transition. That's probably still my favorite part of the song. Uh, but heavy instrumentation, drums sound fantastic, great guitar riffs, great guitar solo, really cool transitions, just a really epic sounding song. Um, I give it two big thumbs up, you know, just instrumentally, vocally. Again, I'm biased. This is a song I already love, but... Um, as far as replay value goes, it's not even worth mentioning because obviously this is a song that I love. I was so excited to get to it today. Huge replay value. Now I got to say, for any album, I feel like your your first song has to be a very strong song. It doesn't have to be your best song on the album, but it has to be a strong song to hook the listener. You know, I think Alter Bridge does this really well. I think Avenged Sevenfold does this really well. And here on this album, I, you know, I, I can't say I've listened to every single Trivium album, but here on this album, this song does it really well. To me, this is such a great, great opening track. And really, that opening guitar part uh, is from the ending song, Shogun. So this is almost a nice loop uh, from song one all the way till the end of the song and then you come back around almost not quite with the way that Shogun ends uh, the actual song Shogun ends but damn still such an awesome song fits the rest of the album thematically just fantastic fantastic loved it thank you so much for the request as you can see I really enjoyed getting to listen to a song that I already know and love and just really getting to break it down and talk about it with you guys hopefully you enjoyed it I know I don't get too many views on these like channel favorite reviews um, because you know people want to see reactors react to things that they haven't experienced before and that's totally fair I totally get that uh, but you know still hope you enjoyed it um, if you enjoyed the music as much as I do definitely go support the artist go listen to the music wherever you can one place you can definitely find this song will be on my Spotify playlist it's got every single song I've heard so far on my channel makes for a pretty great day of listening uh, if you want to support me just all the normal stuff you do on YouTube like and subscribe and comment that's it for me thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to hang out with me listen to some music and I hope you're staying safe and healthy hope to see you in the next video bye for now